say pretty much everything. Um, I'll just add that I am truly glad to be here. I learned about your course uh, some time ago. I was lurking Pete's Twitter account and uh, as I offered to help with this course, he's been studying the best way to involve me since then, so finally here I am. Um, as he said, I am not much of an article writer myself, actually. Uh, but I'm here because I think I can still provide some tips, which I hope you'll find useful, and maybe also some motivation. We'll see. Um, some of this knowledge, as Pete said, is coming from some job experiences, by the way. I have mainly cover a few topics. If you have questions, I'm, I'd ask you and you are and you fear that you might be forgetting them later, please just write them in the chat and I'll answer everything at the end of the session, if that's okay for you. Uh, I've taken some notes as well, so I won't forget what I meant to tell you. Uh, want to start by telling you something more uh, about the major innovation ever in Wikipedia's history, it appears. You have noticed that articles and user pages now feature a second edit tab, which is labeled Edit Beta. That tab activates Visual Editor. Um, Visual Editor allows users to add content without worrying too much about the wiki markup, since it does not use it. You can now write articles exactly like you would write anything in your favorite word processor software. Um, since it is just at a beta stage, uh, what you can actually do right now is uh, adding text, formatting it, adding bullet and numbered lists, adding pictures and categories, adding and editing references and templates. There's a very limited support for some tables. Uh, pretty much everything a basic user would like to do. I'll tell you just a few reasons why, um, although it can still be buggy sometimes, you might want to try it out in your sandbox if you haven't yet. Um, there's a link to my sandbox uh, in the um, in the asset pad, which is link number two, if you want to play with it in the meantime. Okay, the first thing is when you add a wiki link, it will suggest the page you want to link to. Uh, you will not select the wrong page anymore if it was a disambiguation page, for example. The second thing is when you add an image, it will allow you to pick it up from a gallery of all the pictures related to the keyword you use. The third thing, um, which is my favorite one, uh, when you add a template to a page, if this template has already been optimized for Visual Editor and if it features uh, required parameters, you'll find them automatically listed so that you just have to fill them and you're done. And then, of course, you, you can add more if you need to. Elitra, uh, should, we, um, should we do a little demonstration of at least one of these features, maybe? I feel um, like we're moving through them very fast, so maybe we can, can show what it looks like to add, add a, an image or something like that. OK. Uh, okay. Uh, if you want to, can you please do it? so that I don't have to. Yeah. OK, so I, I clicked Insert Media. Um, here you should um, write, I think, um, the, um, a keyword, like, yeah. like Apple. OK. OK. And here you'll see many, many pictures of apples that you might want to choose. So just pick one, this red apple. I like it. OK. There you go. That's it. Um, did you already try the Wikilink thing? 
Uh, yes, but uh, let's try again. Let's. Okay. So I selected students, and now it looks like it's suggesting okay. many articles yes. that start with student. Yes, it's um, uh, suggesting many things that you will usually uh, find, for example, in a disintegration page. So you know, you you see how many students union there are. So you just find the the right one. And the link, and that's it. You have already created your wiki link. Um, for the template, um, I'm thinking about a template with, with required parameters. Uh, maybe the info box one. Okay. Let's try that as well. It's the last one. Okay. Yes. The puzzle piece. We just type info box. Uh, let's try with info box person, I think. Okay. Add, tem add template. Mm, okay. Yes. Uh, this template has a required parameter, only one, which is, of course, the name of the, um, of the person. The, you will find it on the left. This, is, this was not added by Pete. This was already present there. And it will just add his birth date and it's done. Okay. okay. More or less. It's, it, it's pretty much empty, so <laughs> it's yeah. going to look much prettier, but um, that's it. But this is really nice because the info boxes, I think, are something that our students often want to edit, but they can be very complicated to edit. So yes. Is it, is it possible to use this to edit an existing info box? Is that something you would recommend? Yes, of course. Of course. Uh, you can, uh, um, of course, edit whatever you can find on a page. Yeah. Um, the the only thing, as I told you, uh, that you cannot edit right now are tables. Tables, unfortunately, um, do not get along <laughs> much with Visual Editor right now. And also some um, parts which require uh, mass syntax. But as you can see, you, you can easily change everything. And it still allows uh, Wikimark app in the, in the template. As you, as you see, there are the brackets here. Because this is how the template was, um, was written. It was designed to um, understand the Mark app, so it is still featuring it. Um, I realized this just a few days ago because it was reported by Hugh Gardner. Uh, for those of you who have never heard this name before, uh, she is the executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. I will uh, quote her words now. Uh, if you're interested in improving the quality of your articles, um, and I'm referring to their style and tone, and if you hope that one day they can be uh, reviewed and become good articles or even featured Featured ones, uh, please note these words. This is the first project of the day, although it is not coming from me. Uh, she wrote, the one major advantage Visual Editor has over Wiki syntax so far, which I expected but have still found remarkably pleasurable and useful, is this. Back when I was writing articles in Wiki syntax, the actual act of writing was impeded by the syntax. What I mean by that is that Mercap obscured the actual text you were working on, which made it hard to scan for typos, to control pacing and flow, to essentially do any vetting or refining tasks at all. And the need to continually distinguish between Mercap and non-Mercap imposed a tiny cognitive processing burden, which was a distraction from the actual work of writing. So I used to compose and refine in a text editor and just paste into the editor to add markup as a final step. That was slow and kind of painful, and although it worked okay with new articles, it was pretty messy and problematic for existing articles. 
Now with Visual Editor, I can finally compose and refine in the editor and actually see the text, not obscured by Wikisync text. This is easier and faster, but I think the real gain is that it enables me and presumably other writers to actually write better. And over words. <laughs> so now if you give it a shot and if you also verify that this is true for you, uh, let me know it. <laughs> I'd move to the second topic now, unless there is something that I should set already. Now? Oh, I think that's good. Thank you for that introduction to the visual editor. Okay. Um, so, once you have written or improved an article, don't forget to include a picture. I feel this might be overlooked sometimes. Um, pictures can definitely improve our pages. Uh, although finding good and free pictures can be tricky, at least. Uh, it might be easier if you're writing about living people, but if you're not and if you can't find any relevant image accounts, what do you do then? Uh, do you give up, guys? Never. <laughs> Wikimedians never give up. So this is the second pro tip of the day. Uh, don't be shy. Look for a picture you like and ask the author or the copyright holder for permission to upload it on our servers with a free license. Um, there is a common mistake that many people do. They think that they won't be heard, that things don't work, that you just write an email and someone replies, or that nobody knows what Wikipedia is, what the free licenses are, so they will not care. Um, this could be true some years ago, but it isn't anymore. Uh, hundreds of institutions, uh, especially cultural ones, have learned in the meantime about our mission by participating to some partnerships. Um, Pete talked about this before, the GLAM programs. Uh, you can still find it in the chat. GLAM means galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. These are the typical institutions which have contributed so far all around the world. So there are countless examples of major institutions and individuals which are actively providing free content. And this aspect, I found out, is the best leverage you can use when you want to ask someone a permission. If you say, um, the Brooklyn Museum, the Smithsonian Museum has done this before, uh, they will definitely pay much more attention. Uh, uh, for those of you who are interested, this is link number three. Uh, where there's a collection of um, partnerships that provided content for commons. So the first step, if I cannot find a pick on commons, I'm definitely heading to Flutter. You can search for freely licensed picks there. Uh, they have an advanced search page. If I find what I'm looking for, but it is not free, I ask for permission. Um, usually, I contact more than one photographer to make sure that I get at least one reply. Uh, if what I want to use is already properly licensed, um, another tip here, although I'm pretty sure that many would beg to differ. Um, you remember that Pete mentioned before the OTRS system, the group of volunteers to handle this permission. I send them an email with screenshot or whatever I, I have that can prove that when I first spotted the picture, it was licensed as free. Because, you know, sometimes these people change their minds. So it's really good to have a record somewhere. Hey, Richard, we actually have an example. One of our students who's not uh, not with us today, but just in the last week, um, just sent a message to OTRS. I don't think it's been mm -hmm. pro processed yet, but maybe we can mm -hmm. pull this up as an example of where someone might uh, want to use this. I'm going to just pull up the Wikipedia article. 
um, if you um, want, you I can search later uh, on OKRS to find it and process it. I'm yeah. not sure if I am able to do it because uh, it depends on the queue uh, the yeah. that ticket is in. But if it's on a common queue, uh, I I can help with that. So what she did, uh, this is uh, Patricia Leblan, who uh, you may, uh, some of our students may remember from our, our uh, class chat page, our class talk page. Uh, she uploaded two photos of people using uh, these, these interactive sim simulations that she wrote an art article about. Um, she works for this organization, which is out of the University of Colorado, mm -hmm. and their website uh, clearly indicates that the simulations themselves are available under a free license, but these photos do not exist on their website. So there's really no way to prove to someone who doesn't know independently that they're available under a free license. So I, uh, I gave her some instructions on her talk page of how to send an email that would um, well, basically, the, the, the main point here is to ensure that this file, that these photos don't get deleted, because Wikipedians will go through photos and uh, if they see things that look like they might be uh, in violation of copyright, they will delete them. So even if it doesn't happen today or tomorrow, it might happen six months or a year from now. And the, the more you can do to anticipate that and to document the reasons that it's, uh, that it's properly available, uh, the more confident you can be that it won't be uh, delete, you know, deleted unexpectedly. Yes, and if you uh, want to requ request uh, permissions and you just don't know how, how um, I've added the, the link number for to to the other part. There, it's on the other part already, and you can find many uh, template letters that you can use. So. You don't have to reinvent the wheel yeah. <laughs> every time. And these uh, are available so also on the um, on the if you just navigate on the main Wikipedia page, right? If you go through contact us, I think. Um, the which one? Uh, I think that you oh, can find this works for for Wikipedia. This works for Commons, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I'm saying I think if you're on the front page of Wikipedia mm -hmm. and you go to contact page, um, um, this there, will take yeah, you I'm to not sure if, how easily you can uh, get there from from the contact. Th that's the kind of uh, of of work I do in Wikipedia, <laughs> yeah. making sure that people get easily to things. Well, if you if you go through here and you find these addresses like info-en at wikimedia.org, mm -hmm. this goes into the OTRS system. So it, there are several different addresses. Um, there's permissions-en and permissions-commons. So these go into different queues where different volunteers will see them, but mm -hmm. they all go into the same system. Yeah. So uh, to end my part. Um, uh, the last suggestions are that you can also work the other way around. That is, you can let pictures inspire you about what to write next. Um, many pictures are unfortunately just sitting on commons because either because there is no article they could be included in or because simply nobody has noticed they are there. Um, this will, um, I mean, uh, adding mm, content based on existing pictures uh, might also help against one of the worst Wikipedia problems, which is systemic bias. Uh, in a few words, um, some people think that Wikipedia is complete, there is nothing left to write about. As a matter of fact, there are many underrepresented topics, cultures, and so on. So uh, I suggest you read the relevant page, which is the number five among my links, uh, if you're not familiar with this issue. And I will also show you an example. Uh, the Brooklyn Museum 
donated thousands of files in the previous years after being asked to do so. Uh, you'll find some of them in the category of commons, which is uh, link number six. Uh, they now have an employee uh, who is scattering these files on Wikipedia articles. And when there is no article to ask them, she's creating it, of course. So if you take a look at the articles that she created that are marked with the number seven uh, among my links, uh, you can realize uh, how invaluable this adding is to our encyclopedia. And this was sparkled by the images arriving on our project before the text did. And you can also see that this is helping uh, to document the life of some African tribe. And since the articles are new, um, we didn't know anything before about that. And I don't know what you think about it, but I found this stunning. There are also some tools that can check on which projects the picture are used. Um, they are great to document just how far an image can go. Remember that we have 300 linguistic version of Wikipedia. Uh, so people who donated are always thrilled to see the results. Uh, they are glad to see that some Wikipedias in languages they don't, didn't even know that could exist are using those images. Uh, so the last tip of the day from me, um, don't forget to check this tool out. They're the last link uh, I provided. And uh, use them if you manage to obtain a large donation of pictures. Uh, so uh, before I read your questions, mm, if you want any guidance about what I told you today, uh, just drop me a line in my talk page at Wiki. Uh, I'll be glad to help. There was a question from Glenn before, and I think she was asking um, just uh, how often do institutions get involved in uh, Wikimedia programs. And I suggest you take a look at this page. Uh, there's a whole section of the Outreach Wiki, which is um, uh, focused on this uh, topic. So you'll find everything there. Yes, there are dozens, no, hundreds of institutions. Um, that are already uh, collaborating. And if you know someone at a library, at a gallery, whatever, and if they have contents, uh, maybe public domain contents, that would be great. Uh, feel free to ask for guidance. And I mean, uh, we would love to get in touch and get their material onto our wikis.